Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing like another kind of vlog video. And in today's video, we're gonna be picking up more fish. Now, look, don't even ask me. I've got a fish room packed full of different species. I've got more species than I can deal with at the moment. Um, so don't ask me why I'm getting more fish, but today we're gonna be getting some really cool quarries. Now, a lot of these quarries are pretty rare. And you guys might be thinking, why are you like, buying all these expensive fish and it's not even like I don't know why I don't know why I'm addicted I don't know why I'm buying all these fish um, I'm just drawn to all of these really cool exotic fish and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them anyways today we're gonna be picking up a bunch of cool stuff we're gonna be picking up some equus some flag tails and I think two other species leucomelis and I can't remember the other one off the top of my head so, lots of cool stuff's gonna happen in this video. We're driving to the fish room now. I've gotta clear up, like I've gotta go feed all the fish and I've gotta clear up a couple of tanks to make room for all these guys. So, probably gonna split them up into two tanks and then have them both quarantining for a bit. Cause apparently most of these guys are wild caught. Now I don't know how easy these are gonna to be to breed. Probably pretty hard. And it's probably gonna take maybe a year before I even get a chance to breed a lot of these fish. So, just investing for the long run. I mean, if I don't end up breeding these guys later on, and I lose interest, I can still, still sell the colonies, so I'm not too worried, but they are super cool fish, so I can't wait for you guys to see them all. Okay, so I've just come into the fish room and we've given everything a feed. Um, now, what I do in the fish room is I keep all the quarries on like the bottom layer, and that's because the room is centrally heated, so you can see up the back, like an air pond. So I run the temperature at about 27 degrees. That means all the tanks that are high are warmer than the tanks that are low, because hot air rises, so Quarries normally like it to be a little bit cooler than say like rams or like even a pistos, you know, plecos and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna keep all the quarries down low. Now I've got a lot of tanks that are like kind of spare. So for instance, if you have a look at this tank, right? Like down here, you can see there's just a bed in this tank. Now this tank could be used for quarries. We're probably gonna save this so that we can keep some more like juvenile fish like you can see in this tank. So like there's tons of little uh, rainbow fish and dwarf cichlids and things like that. So we're gonna kind of save tanks like this for that. But what am I getting at? Basically, there's a lot of tanks that we've like kind of got to mend together to make things work that I'm just gonna do in the future. But if we look down here, you can see that in here, we've got the skunk quarries with this beautiful koi better female. And then we've got the koi, longfin koi male here with some bandit koi. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these two together. So we're gonna have the skunks in the um, bandits together because they can go together and they're still a bits from breeding and we're gonna put all of our new quarries in here just so we can quarantine them so you can see the bandit quarries there very very shy fish but we're just gonna put them together and we'll kind of like let these guys quarantine we'll just monitor all of them and we'll see whether anything comes and then we can like eventually split them all up so I'm gonna do that now So I've set up the tank and now what I'm doing is I'm just going to quickly give it a quick pH test just to see and know what this tank is. Now, I'm going to take a guess, it's going to probably be a flat 7 or 6.5, which it should be. fish in here so you can see all of them here the thing that I'm most keen on is is these equuses they're really really cool so 
they're actually pretty big like they're really really meaty right now so they are at a breeding size now i don't really know like how i'm going to try and breed them i guess i'm going to try and do it the same as all the other quarries but we'll just see lots of stuff in here I'm considering splitting them up um uh, just gonna have a quick think about it though have a look around oh yeah Right, so here are the axle rod eyes. Now they look really, really good. Now what I'm going to do is going to put them in here with these dwarf neon rainbow breeding colony. So you can see them all in there. This will be like a temporary take for now. Here we've got these are the flag tails. So their flag tails aren't really out right now because we're stressed, but they're big fish too. So they look really, really cool as well. They're meant to go really dark and deep in coloration, which makes them look really cool. Let's see if right here. Now I'm going to completely butcher this. These are, those were the Leucamelis, and these ones are the flag tats. All right, lots of different names to deal with in fishery. <laughs> People are gonna dislike me for doing it this method. This is how I open the bag sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's too hard to take that rubber band off. I literally just pop it and then slowly drain the bag into the tank. So in they go. See you, cool fish. Now, I don't know how active these guys are gonna be. Um, you know how fish are sometimes. You buy, well, especially quarries, you buy quarries. For instance, gold laser quarries and they spend the whole time hiding. You hardly see them. But then you have quarries like these black and the smilins and the trilonitas that I've got down there. Trilineatus, whatever you want to say. And they come, they come out all the time. So it's a bit hit and miss, but hopefully these guys get to see quite a bit. So I'll bring this back. There you go. So we've got 10 of these guys. So that's pretty much going to be it for now. I'm going to let these guys settle in. As you can see, if you look into this aquarium, I fed a bunch of uh, black worms to them so they can fatten up a little bit. And because some of these fish are wild caught, so they're more likely to take the live food. Now, I'm going to leave them for the afternoon. We'll come back and check on them once they've got a bit more color. Um, but they are so cool, some of these guys. I can't wait to show you them in like proper depth. Okay, so it's been a few more days now and I guess we can go around and have a look at some of the quarries. Now, we have only had one loss with one of the axle rod eyes. I'm not too sure what happened. It looked like there was some issue with the shipping. I just didn't pick up on it when I bought it, so that's very annoying. Um, but besides that, we have had heaps and heaps of success with these guys and they've all been eating great. So we'll come over to this tank where we have the axle rod eyes. So these guys are in with the Sturbase. They're doing really well, eating super well. It was just one of these guys that looked a bit dodgy and he just didn't make it. So that's a bit annoying, but you can see great coloring. Now, because of that loss, we only have five of these guys. So that's a little bit annoying because when I'm trying to breed quarries, I normally want to breed them in bigger schools because if they're in smaller schools, I feel like just in the wild, they don't really have the same behavior. But these guys, because they're with the Sturbays, don't seem to be too skittish. Now, they're not going to be in with the Sturbays forever. They're only in here temporarily while I house them until I've got a tank for them to go in by themselves where I can try to breed them. But for now they're in here and they seem to be doing really well. So hopefully they can get settled into the water parameters here in this tank and then they can uh, move on to their own tank and start to breed. So once these guys start to get some live food, they're really gonna fatten up and hopefully that's when we're gonna be able to start to breed them. But yeah, another thing too that's in this aquarium is super high flow. I've got the matten filter just blaring out heaps and heaps of air because I'm sure these guys love to have high flow. So if you've got any tips for breeding or taking care of axle rod eyes, please let me know because any information or any experience that you've had is greatly appreciated by me. Now we can come over to here to the, oh my gosh, these guys are skittish when I'm around, but 
When I'm not around, they are aggressive little leaders. These guys are the wild caught Equus. I'm so glad to have my hands on these guys because they are just so cool. So you can see their orange head and they've got that blue body which kind of changes from color over time. Like every time you look at them, they're a bit different, but obviously being colorblind, I'm probably not the best person to ask about color. These guys are at breeding size. And one of the things I've heard from just watching tons of videos, I don't know whether this is true, so don't quote me on it, but apparently these guys enjoy really still water and really dirty PT water. So I've put this aquarium's matten filter on very, very soft. There's one of the uh, bedders up the back. There's a big long fin koi male there. But the, the matten filter's on very slow and just enough to aerate the water and keep the filter going. I'm trying to just mimic a swamp kind of condition in here. So these guys have only gotten some black worms on the first day just to give them a little bit of fattening up food, but they haven't got any food since like that's live so I'm not expecting them to breed anytime soon but we're just going to keep doing what we're doing here and then eventually once we get some live food in here and we just blast them full of worms or whatever we can do a couple of big RO water changes with like you know pure RO water and maybe they'll get them to spawn now these are probably going to be the most difficult to spawn and uh, I'm up for the challenge but if I can't do it so be it this is still a cool fish and uh, I'm just really, really glad to have my hands on something that's this cool and this rare because these are quite hard to get because most of them are wild caught given that they are so hard to breed. So hopefully if I can breed them, then I will be able to um, breed the F1s and they should be a little bit easier to breed, hopefully. So I'm sorry that you can't get a better look at these guys. They were literally just out here in the courtyard before having some food. Been feeding them some of the, uh, just some quarry pellets and uh, they've been grazing on those and they've also been eating a little bit of um, tetracolor granules which they've seemed to enjoy so that's great when you've got live when you've got wild fish eating prepared foods that's always a great sign so these are the corridor equus you guys will be seeing tons and tons of updates of these guys over the next however long i've got them for a couple of years so you won't be missing out on anything with these guys if you're in a corridor equus and then we'll come over to the Leucomelis tank and there are six Corydoras Leucomelis in here. They're all doing great, eating well. Um, they're in a bit of a bland tank, but they're by themselves. So I don't know whether they're gonna stay in this tank or go in a tank below me because they're in the middle row of the breeder tanks, but they're great coloring. They've been eating well. You can see they have really darkened up, which is great, which means they're comfortable. I think these guys are captive bred. Um, they don't look or appear to be well, they weren't described to me as being wild caught. They're really cool. They look a bit like the Trilonetus or Trilineatus quarries. Um, they've just got a bit of a different face and a more deep pattern, but definitely not the most skittish quarry that I've got. The Equus seem to be very skittish. These guys are really comfortable in their tank at the moment, and you can see they're coming right up to the camera, which is great. They're not afraid of the camera, so. That also insinuates that they're probably not wild caught. These guys are probably captive bred and I'm looking forward to being able to try and breed these guys. So yeah, just a little bit of live food, but you can see some of the pellet that they still haven't finished on the ground here, on the floor of the tank. So really cool fish. Um, I've got to kind of hold back because I've got so many quarries now, it's not even funny. So I'm not gonna be able to get any more species until I clear up a bit more space in the fish room, but these are really, really cool. Now finally, we'll go over to these flagtail pandas, which are really cool as well. I actually got two of these guys for free because they came in with deformed heads, two of them. So I don't think it's got anything to do with the health of the fish, but it's obviously maybe genetic or just that they were stunted or whatever. But you can see right there, one of the ones with the bad head. So I got them for free and they had to pay for four of these guys, but they're really cool. They haven't darkened up as much as I thought they would but with time they will. They're in a tank here with like the breeding pair of just bristlenose, a better that I've been using to breed and just some Japanese blue endless. So hopefully these guys will be in their own tank soon and uh, I'll be able to hopefully breed them when I get some live food into them. But they are a really cool fish as well. I'm super excited to have my hands on these ones. Out of all the fish, these are probably the least rare, but they were like the second most expensive. So pretty random, but another cool fish to have. So that's pretty much gonna wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.